Um, Vivian read the scripture today, John 15, verses 1 to 8, the story of the vines. Jesus talks about himself as the true vine, and uh, John uses the imagery to explain the deep relationships that Jesus has uh, with his followers. Um, As I read that scripture, and I did a bit of study on it, and I looked it up, because I I generally talk about recovery. I, I don't often preach on scripture and and I'm likely going to divert from that and back to the recovery thing today too so don't be disappointed but as I I thought about it I thought about this church this church in the center of downtown Calgary and it's been here since 18 I stand to be corrected 1875 I believe it was planted here the roots of those vines started seeping into the ground then. At the same time, the McDougal Church was set up out at Morley and some of the same connections and people were involved and the outreach started to work. Those, uh, those vines have stood since 1875. The roots have stood here firmly and have been nourished and are still firm and deep in the ground today. This church is known all over all over Western Canada, maybe all over Canada, but all over Western Canada for sure, for its outreach ministry and the different things that we choose to do here. And that's from the roots that were firmly planted and nourished by God and strengthened by God. They grow and they grow each day. The outreach ministry started back then in the late 1800s, but really started to flourish, I believe, when Pastor Wayne came here some 25 or 30 years ago and he he um, started the recovery ministry, him and Michael, and, and really started reaching out into this community in downtown Calgary, to the homeless community, to the recovery community, to people that had little hope, to people that were broken and needed a place to come. Um, I know that we, in the early days that I was around here, we prayed often that God would send us the people that nobody else wanted. Send us the people that no other church wanted, nobody else would accept them, and we would accept them. And you know what? Seems to me he did. Seems to me he did. The the congregations grew, and the evening service grew, and the recovery ministry grew, and the needs for that ministry grew. Um, The church became known as the recovery church, and today it is still the recovery church here in Calgary. It has a reputation, it has a name. As the vines grew and God nourished them, The branches started to grow and weave their way into many, many different communities. Our vines and branches reach to all corners of this province and even stretch out into neighboring provinces and uh, further east and further west than that. Look at our current congregation, which includes a Filipino ministry, a Korean ministry. We have fine vines in the Muslim faith that they feel comfortable enough to come to our church to use it for their prayers in the morning because we're accepting, we're open and accepting congregation. Our branches entered into other churches. People from many different churches and different faiths come to our evening service and to the recovery service to enjoy, first off, I believe, the music. Okay, I think the music draws a lot of people in. But the spiritual connection and to learn a little bit more about recovery and how addictions affect them and maybe their family members and other things that go on in their lives. Uh, So they come from all faiths, from all other churches. Our vines and branches reach into churches through uh, other AA meetings because many churches host AA meetings. So our people go to those meetings, they spread the word about Central and the recovery service and they come back into our church. Some 10 or 12 years ago, Uh, We started a prison ministry and our branches reached into the Calgary Young Offenders Centre to begin with and then ended up in the Calgary Remand Centre and into the Calgary Correctional Centre. Institutions that are all here in Calgary. The prison ministry included people chairing AA meetings in all of these institutions and while they were doing that, they were talking about their faith, talking about the spiritual component of the recovery Uh, of AA and and recovery and when those people got released from those institutions they came directly here to to Central United Church to continue on their spiritual journey. With God's help and nourishment those branches grew and grew. Uh, We had members in CYOC on a weekly basis hosting chapel on Tuesday nights with young men and I want to add here I don't know where he is. I saw him a little while ago, but Bill Moore was a big part in that. Bill Moore went there every Tuesday night and, and did chapel with many of the young men. 
Some of us went in and we chaired AA meetings and got to know the young men in there and we would mentor them in CYOC and then when they got released. Uh, and much to Cheryl's chagrin, that still goes on to today, doesn't it, dear? <laughs> okay. uh, one young fellow that I met 10 years ago in there, I've just had a lot of conversations in the last few days with, and while he struggles a bit, he's, he's still in touch and he's still looking for spiritual guidance. Many of the men and women that attend the evening service have had one time or another been incarcerated because of the, and because of the prison ministry, they come and attend our church to further their spiritual connection uh, and their connection to the God of their understanding. Over the years, those vines and branches have reached out to most of the federal and provincial institutions in this province, including the penitentiary at Drumheller, the penitentiary at Bowdoin, the Edmonton Maximum Security uh, penitentiary, the Lethbridge Correctional Center, the Medicine Hat Correctional Center, and the Red Deer Remand Center. But you guys didn't know there was that many prisons in this province, right? But they're there, and we've gone into each one of them. Their vines, our vines and branches have gone there, and many of our parishioners have had good and bad experiences in those facilities. Our church has been so comfortable and a place of acceptance that the guards from Bowdoin penitentiary bring inmates down to enjoy our evening service about twice a month. Now a number of years ago the chaplain okay, a number of years ago the chaplain from Bowdoin uh, got permission from the powers to be to bring an inmate down that wanted to take part in our recovery service and it has never stopped since and when he can't do it there's uniformed guards that bring them down and those uniformed guards are getting so comfortable here that they they actually ask for that job to bring people here because they enjoy the service as well. The guards have often remarked about the feelings of acceptance that they enjoy and they enjoy the service and the feeling that God's presence is here. Imagine that from a security guard from a penitentiary saying that he felt that God's presence was here. We all feel it. I didn't think they would. Okay? Our roots started with a connection to, to morally and continue to this day. We have parishioners from the Stony tribe at Morley and our vines and branches have reached out into almost every other reserve in southern Alberta. And we have parishioners from Morley, Sitina, Siksika, Blood, the Ochis, the Sunchild, Enoch, Hobima, just to name a few of the reserves. And many of those people show up on Sunday night on a regular basis. We have parishioners from the Flying Dust Reserve in Saskatchewan, believe it or not. And we have one parishioner in the evening service that's been with us for many years and and, and attributes our men's retreat to his recovery and he's from Pelican Narrows, Pelican Narrows, Saskatchewan, way up in the northeast part of the of the province of Saskatchewan. We have people coming from all over and from all cultures and we are very proud and happy that they do that and that they feel some comfort in coming to this church through acceptance and the support of this church and they all admit that they love God's radical, relentless and unconditional love for each and every one of them that they get shown here. Our vines and our branches have moved into all the recovery treatment centers in Calgary and around the province. We are connected with Simon House in a big way, Fresh Start, Sunrise, Alcove, Aventa, Alberta Health Services, 1835 House, um, Alpha House, Renfrew, our own recovery Calgary that runs right out of this church just to name a few. Outside of Calgary, we have the South Country Treatment Centre that we're very well connected with, Poundmakers up in St. Albert, um, and uh, as I mentioned, Brad's uh, Recovery Calgary here as well. Our church also hosts many recovery meetings every week that draws people from all areas of the city. We have AA meetings, NA meetings, we did have SA, I don't know if we still do, but I think so, SA meetings of all kinds during the week in this church. It's open for anybody that wants to do recovery and recovery meetings. And they come and they are, they are well attended. And uh, this church is exposed then to all of those people. Further ministries that play a big role in everything that we do here at Central, I would suggest our music ministry in the evening and in the morning, reach out to many areas of the community and bring people in. Uh, Lorraine's ministry to shut-ins when she visits folks in the hospital and hospices and she carries a message of love and hope to all of them and I'm so proud that, that these ministries are carrying on here. God is nourishing all of our branches. 
Um, you know, there's, there's different courses that go on. We have evening Bible study that, that deals with the scripture that we're using in the evening service, and Bill runs that. Uh, Diane runs a codependency class, and I have seen so many people from her codependency class transform their lives. People that I've been involved with in drug court that have started going to codependency, and their lives have changed, amazingly enough. And there are people that have gone there voluntarily and not been told to go. Um, this church is transforming lives every day. So the, the one organization that's very near and dear to my heart that we're, we're very involved in is the Calgary Drug Treatment Court. Uh, some of you have witnessed that court. Some of you have been there for, for the, the regular court days on Thursdays and for graduations. And you know what, I always love it when there's a contingent of people that come from Central United Church. Because our participants, when they're reporting to the judge on Thursdays, many of them talk about the good things that they've learned and how their spiritual journey has grown because of their association with this church and with these congregations. Uh, some of you have met the participants as they attend our service. Some of them come in the morning, uh, but most of them in the evenings. But many of them have done some volunteer work in the church. And I know uh, Norm and Ron have met a couple of them when they help take the, uh, the pipes out back here. Bobby Goulet has been working on the, the holders in the back of your seat pews and up in the choir loft. Uh, and they love doing stuff. They love being part of this community because they are accepted in this community. Nobody's looking at them. Nobody's judging them because where have they been? They are accepted and they love doing work here. We as a church are part of some awesome transformations. I like to call them modern day miracles that are taking place every day. Our evening service would not and could not exist without the support of all of you in this morning service. It wouldn't likely stand on its own, and we thank you for your continued support, both financially and emotionally, and keeping us in your prayers and keeping all of them in your prayers. That's helping God nourish those vines and those branches to keep things healthy and to keep us going in whatever direction he sees fit for us to move in. Great things have happened in the evening service. We see ourselves as being open and welcoming and, and non-judgmental. Last May, uh, oh uh, yeah, I'm just looking at my notes here. Last May at Pastor Wayne's retirement, uh, a guy came up to me and he said, uh, he said, I gotta ask you a question. He said, do you people in this congregation accept people that have been released from jail? And I stopped for a minute and I looked at him. Obviously it was his first time here. And I looked around and there was four or five drug court guys standing in front of me waiting to get their sheets signed. And I said, yes, of course we do. We accept anybody here. It doesn't matter whether you're from jail or not or what, where you come from. Uh, he said, you know, he said, I, I, I had made a mistake. I went and served my time in Spy Hill in the Correctional Center. I went back to my church that I'd been going to for years. And they told me I wasn't welcome. They shunned me. So from our open arms from our caring and our loving position. He's come back. He hasn't missed a Sunday since. He's volunteered to work on the men's retreat that's coming up, and he is very, very involved and very happy with our service because of that. Um, as I said, transformation uh, is what we do and what we see, and it's an honor for us to be part of that. Many people come to us broken, in despair, with little or no hope. They walk in the back door of the church here in the morning or in the evening and maybe they get the only hug they've ever had. Maybe they get the only hug they've only had this week and that gives them a sense of hope and a sense of, of well-being. We need to continue that. Many of our drug court participants show growths each week they are here. On Easter Sunday night we did an adult baptism. We had seven people baptized. Three of them uh, adults were from drug court. Two of them were females were women and both of them had their babies baptized as well and one of them also uh, had her boyfriend join her and he got baptized she got baptized and so did their young baby Cruz I'm not sure it was the first for the evening service but I don't remember one when we had a whole family baptized there before maybe maybe years ago uh, and it was certainly a first to have the babies baptized with their mums. And it was so gratifying and so great to see them. And they are the first ones to say that this service and this church has given them a sense of being and has helped them on their spiritual journey and their recovery. Uh, it's, it's just phenomenal. So Amber, who was the lady who had her boyfriend with her and her son, just graduated 
uh, from drug court. So 15 months ago, she was looking at and facing a, a, a period of incarceration of up to four years for the offenses that she had committed. She chose to come into drug court and she worked very, very hard to change her life. She did treatment, she did all sorts of extra counseling and training and in the middle of all of that she had a baby which was Cruz who was baptized and she never missed a beat. She was able to do all the things we required of her and still look after a brand new baby and be a mother full time and, and do her thing. So she just graduated and she's moving on with her life. She's on a period of uh, one year of probation instead of doing four years in jail and uh, she's doing awesome. So transformation and miracles, she is one of them. I want to also plug our men's retreat just before I wrap up here. Um, our men's retreat has been a, an event that has had phenomenal um, transformations happen in. It's, it's an event that uh, for sure God shows up from the beginning moment and he's there to the end. Um, we have had people make decisions at that retreat to change their lives, whether it's to quit drinking, quit drugging, to quit doing whatever it is they're going to do. A few years ago, we had a young fellow that was on the verge of suicide. He was extremely depressed. His plan that weekend was to off himself, but he made a change and came to our retreat. We spent many hours with him over that weekend, and I'm happy to say he's still alive. He's connected with this church, and he tells me just last week he's coming back to this service because we've kept in touch and we talk all the time. But it's changed his lives, and I, I want to encourage any of you guys that are thinking about coming. I, I know when I first heard about the retreat some 14 years ago, I was scared. I wasn't going to go to any men's retreat with Pastor Wayne and John Mitchell and have them beat the Bible into me. That wasn't going to happen, right? <laughs> Cheryl was the one that said, hey, put on your big boy panties, you know, and go and see what it's all about, right? See what it's all about. I haven't missed one since, I'm happy to say. John Patterson was my first roommate ever, so imagine why I was afraid, right? <laughs> he, was, he was my first roommate, and you know what? Life changed. Life changed. I realized that these things weren't about anything other than fellowship, uh, about getting together and learning about each other and supporting each other and helping each other. And uh, we have a, uh, an open meeting around the campfire, and that shouldn't scare any of you guys that are not in the program of recovery because it's just an opportunity for a bunch of men to sit around the fire and just talk about life and talk about life's issues and talk about what's going on and how can we change and how can we help one another. All of that is preceded by Guy playing some awesome music either on his piano or on his guitar and, and taking us through a wonderful weekend. So I just want to encourage you, if you're thinking about it, just muster up your courage and do it. Talk to Johnny Patterson. He'll get you a, 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 an application. There's a bunch in the thing back here, Johnny. Uh, and, and come and enjoy and have a good time. We have a steak dinner that's, that's worth the whole weekend. Um, <laughs> so just, just come. Great things happen there and God does show up and he nourishes our vines and our branches and, and helps us do that. In closing, I just want to say that I believe God is doing that. He's nourishing our branches. He's leading us in our missions. It doesn't seem to matter where I go or who I talk to. They, everyone knows about Central United Church for one reason or another. Most of it's good, not all of it, but most of it's good. Um, we were at a function last night. Cheryl and I have just recently moved into the Water Grove Mobile Home Park. Um, so some of our other parishioners are up there, but we were at a function there last night and talking to a lady we've known for a while, and it came out. She said, oh, you know what? Pastor Wayne married our son just a few years ago. And other people there say, oh yeah, we used to go to that recovery service. We know, we know about it. We know about the good work that goes on at Central United Church because it's been in the heart of the city doing the work in the heart of the city for how many years, Lorraine? 100 and 114 years? Yeah, I'm not doing the math, but since 1875, somewhere around there. It's a long time. We have some experience, but people know about us. So we need to carry the message and tell the stories. We need to invite new people to come here, to see themselves, to see what's going on here, just for themselves, to take part in it. Maybe they can share their story and encourage some other people. We need to continue to pray for God's direction, for him to nourish our branches and our vines to see where they will take us in the next 10 years. I think there's huge opportunities ahead of us to expand our missions and to expand our ministries.